The FDA recently approved a new high-tech medical treatment that could help some people move away from prescription painkillers. 26% of Americans who are 20 and older report some type of chronic pain. And every day, more than 650,000 prescriptions for opioids are filled. Two million Americans are addicted to these painkillers, which can often lead to illegal drug use, including heroin. CBS News medical contributor Dr. Tara Narula has a story of the drug-free approach to stopping pain. Connie Hanafi had a passion for riding dirt bikes. Go ahead, kick it, kick it to JoJo. Then minor leg surgery sidelined her with crippling pain. I love your picture. Steroid shots, seizure medications, nerve blocks, and physical therapy did not bring relief. Oh, perfect. Because of her own family history of addiction, Connie refused prescription painkillers. The pain was so unbearable, the single mother of two considered amputating her leg. The pain is constant. It's stabbing, it's burning, it's shooting. It's every type of pain you could ever imagine all in one. Then you're trying your best, but you're just screaming on the inside because nobody can understand what you're going through. Then Connie learned about another option. Good morning. A spinal stimulator that zaps pain. She decided on surgery to implant the device in her back. Lots of pressure again. Try not to jump. Connie, tell me when you feel this. During the first part of surgery, she is sedated but awake. Yeah, I can feel that in my, at the bottom of my foot. Giving real-time feedback so the stimulator wires can be placed in the right spot on her spine. Okay, is it going into your foot and to your toes? Not my toes, no. May I turn it up? Yeah. There you go. And we have everything? Yep. Oh, that's perfect. Spinal nerve stimulators use electrical pulses to block the pain signal to the brain. They've been used for decades, but previous models were bulky and needed frequent charging. This summer, the FDA approved the smallest implantable device, about the size of a pacemaker. Let me know as soon as you start to feel it. In the recovery room, Connie feels a tingling in her leg. I can feel it. Oh, I can feel it. <laughs> oh, thank God. Confirming the device is working to mask the sensation of pain. The majority of patients will report at least 50% reduction in pain. Yusuf Josephson is one of the first doctors trained to treat patients with Medtronic's new implant. And this device has a tracking component so you can monitor what activity they're doing. How is that helpful to you? What it allows us to do is real time follow that patient over a period of time with their, in terms of their functionality. Because ultimately, if they're still sitting on the couch, that's not what we want as doctors. We want them to be functional and enjoying their lives. This is really what I want to get back to. So the goal is to get back on this? Yes. One yes, day this, soon? Yes, this is my baby. <laughs> Two weeks after surgery, Connie's pain has dropped from level nine to two. I really want to get active. I okay. think, you know, I know I've got to slow down a little bit, but I feel great. She has a long road ahead before she's riding dirt bikes again, but she's kept her leg and has her life back. So is there something that you want other people who might be suffering with pain to know from your story? Prescription medication, Although it does help people, that's not the only answer. And if that's not something you want to do, seek out other options. Dr. Tara Narula joins us now. So doctor, this looks like it could be a game changer. It is. And you have, uh, you have it right here. Tell me how it works. Right, so this is a type of spinal cord stimulator. Mm -hmm. The spinal cord stimulators have been around for 40 years, but this just happens to be one of the newer generations that is smaller. It's easier for the patient to recharge. Yeah. Um, it's MRI compatible. So this is the battery, essentially, that gets placed in, so in someone's back in a little pocket that's created, kind of like a pacemaker would be in the chest. Mm. And then these are the wires that go into the epidural space, which is the space around the spinal cord. Um, and that's what transmits those electric signals that block the sensation of pain. Wow. Um, is it expensive? How much does it cost? Is insurance willing to cover it? Right. So it's around $30,000 for the device itself. Whoa. Right. Okay. A lot. And yeah. then it doesn't cover the price of the procedure. However, it is typically uh, covered by insurance. That is good yeah. news. Um, is it permanent? So it can be permanent. The only thing that actually would need to be changed, uh, barring any issues with the device, would be the battery pack, which is changed about every nine years. And so is that sort of another small surgery or? Yep, just a little one to open the pocket, replace the battery. and.
and change it out. Okay, so this sounds great. <laughs> this sounds like everything you always wanted. Mm -hmm. Are there any risks at all? Right, so anytime you do a procedure, there's always risks, right? Especially when you're dealing with, with the, the space. the spine. Exactly. Yeah. So there are risks like infection, um, bleeding, leakage of the spinal fluid. The wires can move or migrate and get in the wrong place, mm -hmm. allergic reaction. So there are definitely risks, but you know, for some people who really have failed all other options, who don't want to use narcotics like opioids, mm -hmm. I mean, this can really be life-changing for them. So who exactly is this for? So you, you said that it's for people who have failed all other options. Is there sort of a specific back ailment that it works better for than others? So it works for several different types of people or several different conditions. Yeah. Um, it's not for everyone with back pain. Typically people who have what we call failed back syndrome, meaning they've had multiple surgeries and they're still having back pain. Mm -hmm. If they have radicular nerve root pain from a herniated disc, again, that's really failed other conservative treatments. Mm -hmm. um, if they have something called CRPS, which is complex regional pain syndrome or RSD. Um, so there are people who can qualify for this, mm -hmm. and it's definitely worth a conversation, you know, with your doctor if you think you may be a candidate for this. So the only concern that I have with something that masks the pain mm -hmm. is, so you don't feel the pain anymore, so you go about your day. Is there a possibility that you're injuring yourself and you're not feeling it? You're making your condition actually worse in the long run. Right, so obviously you'd want your diagno you'd want a diagnosis, um, and so if your doctors say, you know, you've really failed everything else, you've failed surgery, right. and you're gonna be left with chronic pain, then this would be a potential option. Mm -hmm. So yeah. in the situation where you're not gonna continue to cause injury, but actually just need something for pain relief. And is the expectation that this will reduce the number of people who are getting these opioid prescriptions. Absolutely, and I think that's one of the big reasons to get the word out about something like this, yeah. is that we have an epidemic, we have a big problem, and clearly this is something that's a non-addictive option. Yeah. Well, it sounds fantastic. Dr. Tara Narula, thank you. Thank you.